Fiona Robertson here. I am the host of Practical Magic TV and I'm today with Melissa Groom. Thank you so much for being here, Melissa, the visibility mentor. So hi, Melissa. Hello, Fiona. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. We are in sunny France and Melissa, you are in? Australia in winter. It's going to be seven degrees tonight, which is cold for me. <laughs> Isn't technology marvellous that we can sort of cross over the globe and we can talk to people in this way? The whole point of being able to do these interviews with beautiful, beautiful souls from around the world is just to hear their stories about how they believe that they've been soul assisted or when soul has intervened in their life. And in retrospect, you can look back and kind of go, oh, my God. I realize now why that happened to me. So this is what Practical Magic TV is all about, these kind of stories, meeting great people. And I re-met Melissa and it was just divine timing. Melissa's brilliant for bringing women in front of the camera, for making them feel comfortable, for telling their stories. And her tagline is so that you can shine bright. This is what Melissa's brilliant, brilliant for. So this is why we came back in touch again. So I've got a few questions to sort of start us off today, Melissa. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, you've told me already some of your stories and I just, I believe there's, there's more depth, there's more juice in there. So one of the first questions I always like to ask and start these conversations, soul to soul conversations with is, did you always know that you were soul assisted, that you were a soul or just a human? No, I didn't always know that I was a soul. Um, I actually, um, growing up was very difficult um, in my childhood. And so I, I, um, you know, I suffered sexual abuse from two of my stepfathers. And so I really did struggle with just my whole existence and, and having faith in anything, anyone or anything. And, and I did used to say, oh, if there was a God, these bad things wouldn't happen. Um, but, you know, I would find myself praying to God and um, not that I was religious, didn't even know what God was then. Mum just told us there's good people and there's bad people and you can make a choice. You want to be a good person or a bad person. And the, there's a thing called the Ten Commandments and I encourage you to, you know, live by them, which I do. And um, anyway, I we moved around a lot and I remember like every little girl I'm sure would wish for a pony, right? And, um, and so that was my dream, just own a pony. There's no way we would own a pony. My parents divorced when I was probably about four. I was adopted into that family. And, uh, and you know, mum had a some, couple of boyfriends. We moved around a lot and we rented, you know, and we were in suburbia. Like, you, you don't have horses there. You know, you've got to go out and live in the country. Anyway, next thing I know, um, mum was dating a man and we got um, stationed out in the country. And we actually, they had a horse trail ride on Saturdays where they would take all the people coming to the resort that we were caretakers for all through the mountains. And I got asked, would you like to lead the trail ride and this is your little Shetland pony? And I was like, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> like, it was a really weird time in my life because I was being sexually abused by my mum's boyfriend, which made me think, well, I must have been born into hell. I must have been a naughty kid. Um, this is my punishment. And, um, and there is no God. But then on the other side, I had these amazing experiences, you know. So that, that was my first experience where... I didn't realise until I looked back later on where I analysed all the times in my life where I, I, I said, I wonder what it would be like that. Imagine if I could. I wish I could. How can I? And so now I know that I asked all the right questions. Oh, yeah. Right. So, But growing up, I probably said to myself, that's just a fluke. Like I was lucky. I was lucky. I struck a pot of gold or whatever they say. Anyway, mum broke up with that man and 
we she entered another relationship and I was very sad because we didn't have a horse anymore no oh, that's never going to happen no, I'm not going to have another horse imagine that if we did get another horse I mean not that we're living in the country but who knows anyway after a year and a half he got stationed to the country from suburbia and all of a sudden we live on a cattle farm we lived there for about six months and then we got moved to Australia's top racehorse farm like a training like it was owned by one of the elite racehorse trainers and so um all of a sudden they bring home a horse this time he was 17 hands <laughs> very big uh and not that friendly but anyway I did ride him ride him for a little bit before I got kicked off and then I got frightened but it was just like again ah, oh, that must have been a fluke you know I put it down to that and um I went through a lot of challenging times in my life up until about 19 with court cases, taking them to the court and things. Um, but then I, um, I met my husband or my, my former husband, I should say, my children's father. We got married and we had three children together and it was before I was pregnant. Yeah. I have these, I started, you know, they say you have that gut instinct, you know, you, you feel that something's not right or it is right. Well, I was getting more than that. I was actually getting messages in my ear or maybe I was just imagining it. I don't know, but I was out cleaning the pool filter one day because it was making a gurgling noise like there's not enough water in it or something. And so I went out there to clean it and, my hand in the filter to pull all the leaves out but as I was doing it I said to myself I really shouldn't be doing this because I know funnel web spiders can live in a bubble in the water for up to two weeks and I put my finger in jam it, it bit me right on the end of the finger and um I was like yeah well I guess it was like felt like someone just getting a needle and jamming it in the end of your finger really really hard Anyway, I didn't see this funnel web spider, but I went inside, rang the hospital, and um, I just knew it was a, a funnel web spider. My, my, my ex-husband's going, oh, don't worry, it's probably a thorn, a wasp. No, you'll be all right. And I'm like, no, you need to take me to the hospital. I'm serious. If I try and drive myself there, I will be dead. So I went to the hospital. It turns out I had one of the worst funnel web spider bites in 20 years in Australia. I had four vials of anti-venom. Um, not that anyone's died here for a very long time, but the doctors did say to me, if you need any more venom, we're in trouble because all the surrounding hospitals don't have any. So I had like a lot. <clears throat> anyway, when I had my, um, when I had the kids too, like, you know, people, you know, a mum, it's a mum's instinct too, you know, something's not right with your babies, you know. And I'd be saying, oh, my, my son is not well, like, Something not something's not quite right. And my husband's like, oh, he's fine. Look at him. He seems happy. No, he doesn't look like he's putting on weight and he's he's, you know, being sick a lot. It's it's just not right. Anyway, it turned out he had um renal failure and both his kidneys didn't form properly. So I knew then, yes, you always have to listen to your your instincts and that that's what can save you know, could have saved my baby's life, you know, because he was suffering malnutrition by the time we got him to the hospital because he'd been sick for a while, you know. Um, and then, um, oh, there's so many instances. I had another that, incident. Would you say those were some of the divi defining moments when you realised, so like you heard the voice, you know, don't put your hand in there or you hear the like, you know, the, you know, this is could be somewhere where a funnel web spider could live, or and most of us mums, you know, we are, we do have those feminine instincts. You know, like when you raise yeah. a baby, you you learn yep. the different cries, you learn them. They're not yep. speaking right. You just you know. So this is what we're talking about here is about. Uh, so we've got soul intervention. We've also like you know when you ask for help for something as well. So you were asking earlier, like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I could ride a horse? Or wouldn't it be cool if, you know, that would make my life worth living? You know, so we are being assisted 
And as yeah. a mom, you know, we raise our kids in a certain way that we just know what would be best for them. And I think the great thing is if you don't doubt it, it can only go right for you. That's right. Yeah. 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 And I find that, you know, sometimes when people are fighting, should I do this or that? This or that, this or that. You know, and they're just they're fighting with themselves over it for sometimes a long time, you know, like before they make that decision. I remember seeing a, um, a post one time and it was like saying indecision. Well, it must have been a Chinese pro pro proverb or something. Indecision is as painful as like sitting under a tap that's going to just strip on your head like constantly, constantly. Torture. Like. <laughs> yeah, torture. It, it's, it yeah. is torture. So just make a decision. But what I learned throughout my life is that it's usually the very first answer that you get. Yeah. In the, and don't I, I had doubted it. I'm like, oh, we'll wait and see. I'm not sure. Well, but when, I followed. That when something good happens, we are almost educated out of the fact that it is, you know, something greater than us or our greater part of us because it's just not been part of the vocabulary in this particular generation growing up. Yeah. But, you know, I think if we knew how to ask questions better, now this, this, is, this has been something that I've, you know, painstakingly learned. Like it's not just yeah. sitting in meditation waiting for something to land. It's like noticing yeah. what you notice and then saying, oh, uh, what, are, what are the questions that I'm not asking? We've had this discussion before, you know. Yeah. Some of those questions yeah. like, um, instead of how can I earn more money or how can I get this or how can I get this right for me? It's like, well, whoa, hang on a second. What's the bigger picture here? Yeah. How, how can I change to be more satisfied, more successful with my family? It's not just to do with one area of your life. You know, it's, it's how can I, as a soul, <laughs> how can I see the life that I'm living through the eyes of the soul so that I can be more whole, you know? So yeah, that, well, that, I, I, I actually did the Oprah thing 2016 or 15. Yeah, six years ago, six and a half years, and I said, God, how can I serve you? And that's when I got the message to say, you need to teach people what you know about video because you know they're struggling to market themselves and get themselves out there. And then I said to myself, I heard this whisper very clearly that you need to teach people about video. And, I, and then I said to myself, I asked, well, how? How will I do that? And then I w walked inside, sat down, looked at my phone, started scrolling. There was 30 day butt challenge, 30 day ab challenge, 30 day this challenge. So the voice said, you will start a 30 day video challenge. And I said, but how will I do that? <laughs> Next voice comes, we'll write down all the things that you can teach. Okay, write down nearly a hundred. Oh my gosh. All right, well, which ones will I teach out of a hundred to 30? Well. Go get that highlighter pen, pick it up and just highlight 30 because you, you can teach them all, but teach these 30 and then you've got another 70 bonus that you can. It's so Okay, sad. how am I going to get people into this challenge? Well, you're going to put a post on your personal profile. Who wants to join the 30-day video challenge with me and give them the link to the Facebook group that you're going to create. Okay, I did it. 100 people joined in an hour, 200 people joined in a couple of days and I was like, Okay, stop. I haven't created the program yet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, that, that's work. But Fiona, for me, when I said, how can I, um, you know, how can I, how can I serve you? My daily mantra is, God, how can I serve you? And who can I, like, who can I serve today? And how can I serve them? Because we all think we're here for us. <laughs> Like, I, I don't give a damn, like, about being successful. Yes, I want to be healthy and happy. I've got amazing kids, amazing partner, amazing family, amazing clients. I live in a most beautiful place and I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm blessed that way. Um, I believe I was soul assisted. Yeah. <laughs> After well, I
Okay. My marriage, this, I literally... That's success. that's success. That's wealth, isn't it? Healthy, wealthy and happy. I mean, what is wealth? If yeah. wealth is not like, oh my God, I love the house that I live in. I love the family yeah. I've got. The place I yeah. live in, the mountains. Because yeah. look where I've been brought by my soul so that I can live a wealthy life. And now I want to share that and everything that I learned to bring me here because I was listening, because I was following my soul assistance, following my guidance, getting messages like, oh, how will I know when, when I find the right person? How will I know when I find the right place? Mm. And understanding what it feels mm. like in the body. And you and I both yeah. know, because we've talked about it, just like, holy wow, <laughs> that's, that's like, uh, okay, <laughs> I'll go there then. Or if you're asking like you just did for like, you know, a name for a program or how do I do this and then the next thing you do you're playing on your phone boom 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 oh my god they're doing exactly what what you know I I, I believe I, I need to be doing next how are they doing yeah. it how do how would I do it differently what would I call this and then you hear a song or then it's like oh my god I'm not alone in this you know this is just business wise Yeah, well, I look, I got asked to speak in um, Bali in 2016 at a conference. And I said to myself, I'm not going to say I can't afford it. Uh, what would I tell my clients to do? I would tell them to go and buy, uh, go and offer their program. And I'm like, I don't have a program. Well, you can, you can mentor people, can't you? You can you can coach them and help them get from where they are to where they want to be, which is where you are. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. But how will I do that? Well, put a post on your personal profile and offer it as a pilot program. Well, I sold $4,000 worth of programs and I went to go and speak in Bali and I had a 16 day holiday over there by myself. It was amazing. And something very you know? happened to me as well. I was like, for a little while, I've been writing this book called Practical Magic, which is all the stories and like, you know, the, the steps to go through. And then I really like to talk about this. I can see myself talking about this, being on stage. The next thing I know, friend, you know, an, an associate through internet, somebody that I network with said, oh, I'm going to this talk on Valentine's Day and I'm going to be speaking. I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. She said, well, I'll ask the lady, you know, for space. So I asked the lady and then it just boom, 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 boom. And I was like, oh, I don't have any money in that account. I don't have any money in my, you know, this account to do that. How am I, how, how am I going to get there? I've just booked this ticket. And I'm like, my, my head just kept going down like that. I'm like, what am I looking at like down there? What, what's going on? What's down there? Remaining curious all the time. Like, okay, there's only old credit cards in there or old loyalty cards from years back. I don't even know why I've still got them, but they're all in this box. So I went through and went, oh, there's an old credit card. Yeah, but there's nothing there. I took that loan and that credit card. So with the building project that I had. But Fiona, you've got money still in that account. All right. Looked it up online. Yes, I did. Exactly the amount I needed. Went yeah. to London, did the talk, visited my family, came back, rested yeah. for a while. I went, did you set all of that up? And I just got like, <laughs> I got my like, yes, you asked. And, you know, we want you to do this. So like, yes, we set that up for you to have an experience of what it would be like talking to a group of people. And I was like, wow, yeah, you did, didn't you? It, you intervened and, and you did this. And soul intervention, like, you know, brought me to France, brought me to this place because I'd written about it. I knew the energy of it, knew what I was looking for, but then boof, forgot about it all of a sudden you find yourself in that place. And this is how being soul assisted works with, you know, finding the, the right partner or finding the right house and selling it for the right price, raising your kids, raising your business. Now I would say, now you, you answer this or not, my business is probably the most spiritual practice that has dragged me <laughs> through, the, <laughs> through the, the fields, the hedge and everything, just sort of become more spiritual, more soul assisted. So would you say this? Same? Definitely, yes. 
I mean, I um, everything else before that, I feel like was, you know, just happened as a result of actions or whatever, whether it did or not. But when I started my 30-day video challenge, I started um, attracting spiritual people into the challenge. But also I would work with so many women to help them with their avatar or their ideal client. But I hadn't actually said to anyone, this is my avatar, like, you know, this is who I want to work with. So then I thought, well, who do I really want to work with? I want to work with spiritual people uh, who don't mind when i doing my mentoring to say, hang on a minute, I'm getting a download <laughs> and won't think I'm crazy. Yeah. Just been given a question to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't actually market or brand myself as a, as a coach for spiritual people. I don't. I just look because there, there's people who uh, I, I predominantly work with speakers and coaches, um, you know, and mums in business. I have a big soft you know, place in my heart for mums in business because I know the, the challenges that they go through. Um, but I, you know, I do a bit of videos and, and marketing, but honestly, I, I, just, I just say, universe, bring me the people who have got a really important message to share with the world. And that's all I say. That's it. I, you know, it's, there's no pushing and forcing or, or struggle. I just... yeah know that it's all all being taken care of yeah that's Mm. the way that I've been shown as well it's all to do with the feeling of it because I've been a bulldozer and I've certainly sort of pushed out a lot to do with business and you know in in some ways in the old ways of course that worked pushing yourself Mm. out marketing writing and all the rest of it but in in some ways the energy of that is actually quite repellent it's it's um, a very needy sort of energy and um, it is repellent to you know when you're working with spiritual people because we're all empathic and we're picking up what people are doing over the internet and things like that as well mm-hmm. I have I was asked a question to ask you several before we came on and did this interview so um, I want to just follow that up have you read any specific books or is there any way that you've um, taught yourself to be more this way that's that's what I'm being asked to ask you the, the language doesn't always come through very well but what kind of what yeah. books do you think that you've that have made an impact on you that maybe you can share well when I was about 25 maybe early 20s I went to my mother-in-law's bookshelf and she had heaps of books on there and I was not a big reader Actually, I think it must have been after I was 25 because I remember the first book I ever read was April Fool's Day, which is an Australian book. And I read it from front to front to cover. And, yeah, I was 25. Now, at school, I didn't read books because I'm like, I don't want to read that, you know, like just because you told me to, you know. <laughs> I, like, aced it in English with my creative writing, but then I failed because I never read the novels. Um, but the reason why I didn't read it and I didn't know until later on, is uh, I would read the page and I'd forget what it said at the top by the time I got to the second page. So if I read a book, I've got to read it from front to cover. Oh, probably probably not now, but I think it must be a train thing. So I, I, I didn't read growing up at all. We moved around a lot. I had a lot of trauma going on. It was just not something I did. Um, but anyway, I was at her house and I was looking at the bookshelf. Something told me to go over there and just pick this book, book up. And it was the Celestine Prophecy. Mm-hmm. Nothing is by coincidence. Yeah. So that's about all I can remember from the book, to be honest. I'd love to go back and read it now that I have a better understanding of yeah. things. Um, I've read another book called um, by Paul um, Paleo. Oh, can't remember. I'll try and remember it. Um, there's another book that's not really spiritual, spiritual, but it's by Pam Grout. And she's written the book E Squared and E Cubed. And I've, I think I've, I can't recall. I've, I've read one or, or both of them. But basically it's saying think of something and just think of it a lot and put all your energy and intention into it and it'll appear. 
And so I've actually taught my kids to do this and it was, it's blown their mind. Like they forget though, I mean, they are only still, well, they're young adults now. And I forget too. I forget too sometimes. Um, Part of our programming as well, that, you know, we know something and then we forget it and then we get reminded and then we forget it. You know, if you eat that bad food all the time, you're going to, your clothes are going to be too tight. You're going (laughs) to. Yeah, you but I know. think it's great what you've just said there and that's that's sort of bringing us on to the next bit about that you're raising your kids to be inquisitive to be to know that they're the creator because I mean I don't just talk about soul assistance because that is about you create your own reality and this is oh, what oh. I, I teach yeah, my kids sorry. that I know that you've taught your kids that too yes I'm, I just got a download then could be your next book you are the creator yeah and I think that's what we forget is that we are one with the creator you know Um, but another example um, a couple of years ago I took the kids up to a a game shop a retro game shop where they had old games for sale and my two boys I took them up and I said you know you choose your Christmas present this year because that way I know you like it (laughs) anyway we got to the counter and it, it said oh if you spend over fifty dollars, you go in the draw to win five hundred dollars worth of games. I said, "Oh, well, we're definitely going to spend over fifty dollars, so that's awesome." So he gave us a couple of tickets to go in the draw, and then on the way home, we we're playing the music and singing in the car. And then I turned the music off and I said to the kids, "Hey, kids, let's celebrate!" And they're like, "Celebrate what, Mum?" I'm like winning the games you see you've got to be grateful and and say thank you and celebrate and then you bring it forward to that time and they're just like okay mom and i'm like come on you've got to be like really excited you've got to feel it in every ounce of your being like kids just just think i'm so loopy but i don't care (laughs) um that night at nine o'clock the shop rang and said they won the five hundred dollars worth of games, you know. And that's just one of many, many examples I could go on. I oh, seriously could write a book. In fact, if you write that book, you are the creator. I'll be a co-contributor and I can share the things that <laughs> I think specifically to do with kids. I've been I've been asked to write a book about how to keep your kids' natural instincts, and that is being the creator. When my kids want something, I said, "Well, put it out there." you know create it you 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 decide what you have you know they have it has backfired a couple of times but mum you said I have anything. I want to <laughs> yeah well, when well you- I always yeah. make sure make sure if you do ask it's for your best and highest good yeah exactly yeah yeah but I mean there's so many stories in there about raising kids with natural instincts and this is a course where we humans are evolving now you know there are a few people who are doing this consciously who are being the creator of their own reality i mean not just a few there are but it's a small percentage on the on the planet but as Mm. as a human evolves this is what this is what we're doing and of course if you're a mum and you're raising kids how great to teach them that they are going to be the creator of their own reality You get to live wherever you want. You get to do whatever kind of job. I mean, gone are the days when the only jobs available were sitting behind a desk or doing what you were told to do. You know, mm-hmm. you you are responsible. Your soul is in your body. Mm-hmm. You are responsible for sort of like how you want to live your life. I remember um, we lived in Sydney on the northern beaches. Is very expensive, um, million dollars to live anywhere near the beach. So we were probably like five, yeah, maybe five kilometres walk to the beach, right, which was still close to the beach within driving. But I, I, I used to lay there for ages going, I dream of living near the beach, like walking distance to the beach. That's my absolute dream. Well, I didn't know I'd have to go through a divorce and leave all of my family and friends and move a 1,000 kilometres away, which... By the way, something just made me get in the car and just drive for nine hours straight. And as soon as I drove into Kingscliff, this voice in my head said, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And um, anyway, it turned out um, after 18 months, my settlement money came through and I was looking for a house to buy. So I went looking for houses and I found this house and it, it needed a bit of doing up, you know, like it had a, a tenant in there and it was a bit dirty and a lot of rubbish in the backyard, but overall structurally it was good and it was 600 metre flat walk to the beach. And um, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not really a renovator and I couldn't really see past, you know, what needed to happen. My ex-husband came through and he says, you're an idiot if you don't buy it for this price. Like this is a bargain, you know. So I bought, bought the house and I ended up um, dating a guy who happened to be a landscape gardener. <laughs> he came in, got his little bulldozer and dug up all the backyard and put all beautiful native plants in and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I wasn't with that guy for very long, a few months. And the real estate agent who sold me the house lived in the same cul-de-sac directly across from my house. And he rang me up one day and he said, do you want to go for a drink? And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? And the rest is history. We've been together now for 15 years. But I used to lay in bed across the road and I'd say, uh, I'm imagining that my ideal partner who loves and, and respects me for exactly the way I am is laying right beside me. But I don't care what he does for a living. I don't care how much money he's got in the bank. All I care about is this man is genuine, loyal, honest, trustworthy with my children, and now he's my partner. And, and I have so, um, so many similar stories because I remember going, I'm ready for dating now, you know. Okay, so what is it that I want? You know, like, oh, great DIY, but he adores me. I don't care what he does for the job. I don't care about this, that, and the other. But the feeling I want is this. Oh, my God, I can imagine him sitting next to me in, in the car, going shopping, we're talking, having a laugh. I can imagine that, oh, first of all, I wanted him to be a little while away, you know, so only at the weekends. And then I decided to change it and kind of go... Do you know what? He lives in the next village. I can see him anytime I want. And it's just fun and it's easy. And he loves me. He adores me. He'd do anything for me. He speaks these languages. He's great at DIY. He's got kids of his own. That weekend, I meet the guy, go on a date. We've been together now for like eight years. And, you know, that's, that's the way it works. It's like imagining, imagining. Imagining, imagining. I remember leaving my house and then going uh, up to my new house, imagining like, oh my God, this is the first time I'm coming up the driveway in my new house and all the boxes are there and going to unpack them and it's going to feel great and the kids have got their own bedroom. This is the creative zone of how mm. you create your partner, your home, your business. Of course, yeah. most of us don't want to do it for some reason to do with some of the things that are most important to us because we kind of go, oh, well, that's, that's a little bit fantastical, or, you know, that's a little bit out there. So we kind mm -hmm. of avoid it. And I know I've avoided it for business because, I don't know, I've, I've just got something, I would just had something in there. So I wasn't allowing myself to do that for my business. But I know I've done it for the house, my kids, <laughs> my partner, all sorts of things. Selling a house for the, on, the, on the market, like everybody said, you'll never sell it for that. And you'll never buy a house for that never had an agent I, my soul just showed me where to put a sign what to write on the sign <laughs> and also at what point you know you go and look in that estate agent window or you go and drive yeah. that road and kind of go there's the house well my house actually um we we dated for two years like before i moved in with the kids and we're having a garage sale here and the guy goes, oh, are you guys selling? And I said, no, but my house is for sale. It's going on the market tomorrow. He goes, how much? And I told him, he goes, I'll buy it today. Okay. And he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is and why like, it's so brilliant talking to ladies like you who get it. Would you say that, you know, at what point did you kind of go, that's not luck? I created that. I mean, that is a very important step to, to notice and kind of realise mm -hmm. that, you know what, 
do you know what? But that's not luck. That just can't be luck anymore. I, yeah. I'm the creator. I did that. Yeah. Um. Oh gosh. Well, I'm 49 now. My son had his transplant nearly 11 years ago, but I do remember when he was having his transplant that, so he's got his father's kidney. And I said to him before we had the operation, put your hands on your tummy where they're gonna put dad's, your dad's kidney in. Now I want you to close your eyes and I want you to accept your dad's kidney as your own. Mm -hmm. And like, everything's gonna go smoothly. You, you you know you're going to be able to eat whatever you want you're going to be feel great it's going to be amazing and he has had amazing health yeah. you know and it's been an incredible match um there's been some scares but i keep thinking oh he's he's like the chosen one because it's like either luck or again spiritually assisted because like yeah would you also believe then, you know, so like you said, oh, there's been some scares. So what came in to ask, what came in then to ask you is, for me, my experience is when things go a bit shitty or when things go a little bit loopy, those are the things that are really reminding me to be so appreciative. And now, mm -hmm. you know, last year, my poor all broke down on, on this particular road coming back from the beach with all the kids in it. We had to push it and all sorts of stuff. But the week before, my scooter had broken down on the same road. And I was like, what's that all about? I'm just inquisitive. What's that all about? And sometimes it takes someone else to kind of help you soundboard it all out kind of thing. And we were doing this. Mm -hmm. And I just went, oh, my God, I'm going down the same road and I'm getting nowhere. Right. Okay what's my next step where am i going and it's not like you stay at the same level of intuition or soul assisted we're always evolving we're always growing and it's always a time for more appreciation and um, mm. so would you some of agree with that about the you know when it gets a bit sticky that, that that's the time for you to be nudged again it's like hmm, come on, there's, there's another realm to go into yeah Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, look, my son's 22 now and um, I remember when he was um, diagnosed in the hospital and the, and the doctors told us he had renal failure. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know if he was going to live or, or what. And I sat down and I said, God, I promise I will never ask for anything again if you just let him live. <laughs> And for a long time, I didn't, you know, and, but I realized that he is, I, I say to him, he's a miracle. I mean, we're all miracles, mm. you know, one in a trillion chance of being born. Um, but I am, because I've seen so much in the hospitals. I, I've seen other people, other parents knowing that their children aren't coming home, you know, and I, and I feel so grateful that, we have him, um, he has to have medication every 12 hours, you know, it's, um, it is what it is, but I, I, I'm grateful for the little things, you know, it's how I start my day, I, you know, especially now in COVID, you know, I see a lot of people in fear and anxiety and I can't say it hasn't touched me either because it has, you know, it has come in waves and I just say to myself, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. Whether it's the fresh air, the, the blue sky, the sunshine, nature, my able body, my part, you know, like I just run through all them and I'm like, wow. So, you know, I go and see some people and they go, oh, it's a crazy world out there. It's a mad world yeah. out there. And I'm like, no, it's a beautiful world, actually. We just depends what you spend the time with and what your, what your, perception is i mean if you think everything's going to be okay everything will be okay if you think it's not going to be okay well it's not going to be okay yeah. i had the same discussion at the weekend and you know the, the discussion had been going on for such a long time all in french and i'm like you know i think that's why i'm living in french because sometimes i, I miss things and it's like oh, just stop talking about it it's just not important because you invite that into your into your realm into your life you know the more you complain about something or you worry about something or oh. 
you know, you've got the fear about something and, you know, or it's all going to be okay. You know, but yeah. then of course this, this thing comes up and in my opinion, this is the thing that's, you know, going to be the great divide with people who understand about, you know, being soul, being spiritually assisted, that you create your own reality and, you know, it's, a, it's, it's already a great divide about who's had the vaccination and who hasn't. It's almost being a bit racist about who has and who hasn't mm -hmm. causing this yeah. kind of divide. But this is a point of waking up for me that I see in that you take responsibility for what you put in and on your body. Now, I come from detoxing and I come from raw food. And I would say that made me hyper aware of my body and how it feels in certain locations or with certain people. Mm. is there anything that you do that you think has made you more caring for your health your system your body your soul that helps you get better information through well i pretty much gave up drinking when my son was born and i won't say i don't have a drink every now and then but i thought about it the other day and i thought probably 10 if I'm lucky drinks a year mm. like and I used to be a very very big drinker to drown my sorrows obviously when I was younger and try and forget about life yeah um until I passed out like so <laughs> a lot a big drinker um but I did it for fun too you know as I got into my mid-20s you know I love to have a wine love to have a cocktail I still love cocktails you know um but I also understand it's a um what do i say it interferes i'm pretty sure it interferes with your your spiritual assistance <laughs> you know so i must sound a little bit of a control freak i think i think when you've gone through trauma and you can't control what's been happening to you then you form habits where you like to be in control of things so that you feel safe you know, and then I, I was a bit in control of all of my children with their special needs and the diets and everything they needed. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I, I won't say I won't ever get drunk because never say never, you know, my 50th birthday is next February, but I could have two cocktails and I'll be happy, happy as. And then I could just have lime and soda water and I don't need to have all of the alcohol in my system. I'm not being precious or anything like that or putting anyone down who loves to have a drink or anything like that but I I just feel in myself I just feel very connected I feel such a privilege to have this beautiful body that I was gifted that's able and yeah I just really value my my good health too you know and I haven't always had good health I suck I did get chronic fatigue you know um probably around the time after just after my son had his transplant you know and and just trying to push myself with work and staying up long hours and working weekends all that sort of stuff and I'm like nah I'm honoring myself now the weekends are for family and my partner time and friends so you have to say thank you then to the symptom that cropped up to help you reevaluate and readjust what you were doing and the drinking is such a great story because um, you know, I, I've helped ladies and myself as well with the sort of the eating syndrome because that's just a way of numbing out the world. It's a coping mechanism, you know, the same as drinking is or smoking is. These are all just coping mechanisms for being able to sort of how you control your day or how you get through the day or how you, woof, you forget the day at the, you know, on, on the, when you're on your last legs. Mm. Um, I remember an ex of mine saying when I was discovering raw food and I've been raw for a while, I was like, oh my God, I feel fabulous. My head is like, boom, it's got so much information coming through. I feel great. And he goes, when are you going to start eating and, and drinking, you know, again, like normal people? Um, he said, I don't believe it. It makes you feel better from your toes up. And I'm, I thought about it for a while and I went, it's not a phase. You know, I, I now can say I get higher on life than I yeah. ever got when I was eating, drinking, or smoking, or, or any of the, I'm not saying that I don't, you know, take a drink, but I'm like, 
you know, I can, somebody pour me a glass of wine and I'll probably sip it and kind of go, hmm, I really enjoy having a clear head and getting up in the morning and <laughs> not feeling really drowsy. But that's yeah. not the reason I do it. It's just, it just doesn't attract me. So like, it's funny, isn't it, that you, your body, I mean, I ask my body as well, how can I, how can I, you know, change so that we can feel, because you can always feel a little bit better than you do today. You can always feel a little bit better. You know, what is it that, that would make me feel even more flexible, stronger, enjoy my body more? And it's just, it's, it's, it's a process, you know, and if you put weight on, sometimes it's not to do with what you're eating, it's to do with what you're thinking. It's mm. what to do with what you're holding on to. I mean, gosh, there's so much that we can talk about this, but I honor you that the fact that you honor your body and that you listen to your body. And it's a great story about, about the drinking. Would you say you had anything that you would like to, would love to tell your younger self? Oh, yes. so much uh, yeah I know how much time do we have Fiona <laughs> no, well we can finish on this one I mean we'll do another one another time because yeah. it's such yeah. valuable just that, um, well just that you know you you are loved that you are worthy that you do belong that you are a beautiful person um the world needs you <laughs> um yeah that you are not you are not what people did to you or said to you or didn't do for you. Um, yeah, because you do get shaped, all your beliefs do get shaped around how you were treated as a child. And if it's not very nice, that you do struggle with self-esteem and worthiness. And, and it took me until I was about 40, 44, before I actually, you know, had a process done with a girlfriend and made me realise that I was not this disgusting person that you know because I'd suffered sexual abuse that was that's what happened that's not who I am even though I felt disgusting I actually don't anymore and that's so freeing it's so amazing and it it breaks my heart that there's people around the world that struggle with this every day men women yeah I mean physical and mental and emotional abuse it's not it's not what someone has done or said to you. If anything, it was a pretty much a kick up the backside to make you actually realize what I'm being told so much is like, have you any idea how powerful you are? And of course, a lot of us, you know, run away from that for a while because it's just like, oh no, I don't want to be that powerful. But I mean, if I fell over and bruised my leg or could have, you know, really damaged my leg the other week, I spoke to my leg and I sent it love, I'm thanking you so much didn't even get a bruise. And if you knew how hard I felt, it would be impossible on a logical to think that that's what you did. But I mean, this is just, you know, this is also symbolism of how we beat ourselves up. I mean, your body, you are phenomenal. And one of the things I often do with clients is kind of like, can you just say to yourself now, I'm brilliant. If you just say that to yourself, and I love me and I'm, I'm brilliant. And then feel the response in your body as you speak to your soul and you say that your body, yeah, your body just kind of reacts and it's just like, oh, there I am. <laughs> there I am. That, that's me. That's me at home. That's how I know I want to feel. And then you start to know yourself compared to someone else, how they're treating you. Yeah. And all of this internal work, I just, I just, it, it's lovely. It's really just the most beautiful journey ever to realize that you are soul assisted, you have a cosmic parent looking after you all the time. Mm -hmm. And I Absolutely. think you've just been such a great guest to sort of demonstrate this, you know, we've got hundreds of thousands of stories. I can see that now with some of the new stories I'm hearing from you about how we have been soul assisted and how we can get in touch with that. So Melissa, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing. Is there anything Anything you want to leave us with that's really, really important for you? Well, the message that was downloaded during this uh, interview was that you are the creator. So remember that. Whatever you are experiencing, 
what have you done to bring that into your life? And if you're experiencing things that you don't like or, you know, there's a lot of people that are suffering ill health and, and, and all sorts of traumas and tragedies. I'm not going to say you pulled that in. What I am going to say is you can create a better a better life for yourself. Turn that around. You can do a 180 degree turnaround on that. And um, this, is, this is basically one of the reasons that I'm here is to, um, I've been told my purpose is to, help you reconnect with your soul so that you can do those 180 turnarounds and that's just what you're thinking what you're feeling what you're putting out there what you're yeah. acting like melissa's talking about and you are the creator so um thank you very much melissa thank, thank you, great, you. To, great to see you on this level you are the creator Learn how to get soul assistance in every little thing in the life that you create. How you run your business, creating a family, a love partner, selling your home, getting guidance about your business and your clients, easy and effortlessly. Allow practical magic into your life. Say, I created that and understand how the soul has a